Good morning. I'm Paul Sanderud, uh, pastor at Blair Lutheran Church, and with me is... I'm Adam Ahrens. I'm the pastor at North Beaver Creek Lutheran Church. You may want to take a moment now to gather elements for communion, which we will lead later in this service. So take some time to gather some bread and some wine or juice so that we may, when we offer communion, you may partake yourself and with those in your household, as well as with the body of Christ united around the world. So welcome to God's church on this, the fifth Sunday of Lent. These communities of faith have one great aim and purpose, and that is to help people grow in life-giving relationships with their neighbor, their own self, the earth, and with God. That's why we've come together, and that's why we're glad you're here. Remember that we are in the holy presence of God. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus the Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour, pour out, out your, your mercy, mercy over us. us. Our, our sin, sin is heavy, heavy and, and we, we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the Spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus the Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, help us to let go of our desires, our ambitions, our egos, and fall into the soil of you. Help us entrust ourselves to the spring of you to let the sun warm us and stir us deep within, to sprout, to break the husk of our self-imposed shell so that life can come forth, so that our true selves can burst out in golden waves of goodness, compassion, and mercy. This birthing from dying to ourselves is necessary 
for us to bring forth your good fruits. Amen. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Help, save, and defend us, O God. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. For the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Our psalm this morning is from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash Wash me through and through from from my wickedness wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against Against you you only only have I sinned sinned and done done what is evil in your your sight. sight. So you are justified when you speak and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body body you you have broken broken may may rejoice. rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and and renew a right right spirit within within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore Restore to me the joy joy of your your salvation salvation, and sustain sustain me with with your bountiful spirit. spirit. Turn to the Lord your God, for he is patient and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Our gospel for today is from John, the 12th chapter. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks, They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Well, Philip then went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, 
unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now, my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Should I say, Father, save me from this hour? No! It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. So, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, oh, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death that he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Holy God, give us grace and open our hearts and minds to hear your true and living word, Jesus the Christ, who will transform our lives. Amen. Okay. This is your trigger warning. We're going to look at the kinds of meaning that Jesus brings to our lives. And you may find some of this uncomfortable, and it may push some of your buttons. So consider this your invitation to have further conversation with me if this triggers something in you. All right, looking at this text, we need to backtrack a little bit on this reading place it into a context. This scene takes place on the afternoon of what we refer to as Palm Sunday. It was a festival time, Passover, in Jerusalem, and just the day before, Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead in Bethany. And lots of people had seen him do it. (laughs) And do you think they were quiet about it? (laughs) So they followed him. As he went the two miles or so from Bethany to Jerusalem, And as he entered Jerusalem, they waved palm branches and shouted, Hosanna, save us. Well, predictably, the Pharisees are not happy about this. And they plot to have him and Lazarus put to death because so many people, so many of the Jewish people were deserting and following Jesus. They felt powerless against this Galilean man who claimed to be from the Father in heaven. And even some Jews who had previously left Israel and moved to Greece came back for Passover. And instead of going to the temple, (laughs) they wanted to see Jesus. Philip and then Andrew tell Jesus this, and he what? Well, he all but ignores them. Jesus again is trying to get across to his disciples the meaning of his life with an analogy of a seed dying in the earth to be reborn. And then he alludes to both his death and resurrection, when I am lifted up from the earth, lifted up on the cross and lifted up out of the tomb. There's a number of meanings that can be had from this reading, but I wanted to highlight three today. The first meaning can be found in, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. I don't think it's here, but in, uh, this quote is often, has been often engraved on pulpits a lot. We find our meaning as Christians in Jesus' life, in his ways of interacting with people and in the things that he taught, and we find ultimate meaning in his death and resurrection. We want our sermons to challenge us, to make us think about what meaning Jesus has for our lives today. The second meaning can be found in the analogy of the seed dying in the earth 
to be reborn and then be fruitful. Well, besides being prediction, a prediction of what was coming for Jesus, it's a simple analogy for what we need to do to truly follow Christ. We have to die to ourselves to be reborn into something that will bear fruit in the, king, uh, the fruit of the kingdom of God. You know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. So what does it mean to die to ourselves? Well, it means that we give up our ideas of what is right and good for God's ideas, because our ideas frequently emphasize what is right and what is good for us. It also means that we let go of our ideas that we shouldn't be persecuted. I mean, Christians, if they are truly following Christ, will always be persecuted because we don't value the same things as the world. We also have to let go of our ideas that the world should automatically give us respect and bow down to our Christian values. We have to earn that respect every day by what we do and what we say. It also means that we should let go of the idea that we should somehow be offended when somebody doesn't respect Christianity the way that we do. Again, respect is earned. It also means that we need to let go of the idea that being a Christian and being American are the same thing. (laughs) Jesus came for the whole world. Christianity is for the whole world. And yeah, it also means that we need to let go of the idea that America is a Christian nation. Did that get your attention? If you are a Christian, you follow Christ. And that means you have to be a human and you have to be willing to die to yourself for the sake of others. A nation is not human and its purpose is self-preservation. A nation can be populated by Christians, but a nation itself cannot be Christian, just like a ranch or a cafe or a softball team. We have to let go of this idea because we are citizens first of the kingdom of God, and to believe otherwise is the sin of Christian nationalism. God did not form a covenant with the United States. If we are Christian, we die to ourselves, we die to our political party, to our country, our national heritage, our school, our clubs, our town, our family. We seek first the kingdom of God. We die to all our other allegiances because they, because they are almost always the root of conflict and pain and jealousy and cruelty and idolatry and envy and quarrels and dissensions. Those things that are called the works of the flesh, as the Apostle Paul calls them. And he says that those who indulge in those do not, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And when we lift up the example of Jesus, we have to put down all our other allegiances. These are the rulers of this world that will be driven out, the seductive, the tempting powers of this world, the power, the powers of this world, that is power, the acquisition of power, security, safety, tradition. The third meaning comes from Jesus himself. Here he is, surrounded by admirers, but he's facing certain death from the Pharisees and the Romans. He knows. He can see it all unfolding. He knows he is going to die and that he will rise again. But he says his soul is troubled. As a human being, does he or is he having doubts in his belief in God? I would say that that is precisely 
what makes us human. We have faith to help combat our doubt. And Jesus here says, should I ask God to save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason I came. Jesus controls his natural human emotions in the face of unavoidable suffering, in the face of certain death. And this is our third meaning today. We too can control our acting out of our natural human emotional responses in the face of anything. Viktor Frankl was a Viennese psychologist treating suicidal patients when he and his wife were arrested in 1942 by the Nazis. The Nazis enforced them to abort their child and then they were deported to Theresienstadt along with his parents. In the three years he was in the camps, he lost his father, his brother, his mother, and his wife. Everything he held dear was taken from him. In his book, Man's Search for Meaning, in which he chronicles the systematic ways in which the prisoners were constantly dehumanized, he also recognized that the one thing that no one could take away is your choice of how to respond. He worked with fellow prisoners who felt that they had no dignity or value to help them find gratitude in even the smallest of things. He helped them cultivate an inner life and a sense of personal value. The ability to choose one's response, one's attitude toward their circumstances is the freedom that cannot be taken away. Jesus chose to stay focused on his mission, to teach a new way of being in the world that was aligned with God, and he controlled his natural human emotions in the face of certain death. <laughs> and we can do this too. When we stay focused on the new way of being in the world that is aligned with God, love one another as I have loved you, we too can control our acting out of our human emotions. We can choose our response. We can choose our attitude. We are ultimately in control of our emotions, our responses, and our attitudes. We choose how to respond. We choose how to act out of them. Yeah, some things set us off, sure. Our sibling picks on us. Our workmates might manipulate us. Somebody may post something that gets us angry. And we say, well, we have the right to be angry. <laughs> well, maybe so. If you want to give up your ultimate freedom of how to respond to somebody else's control, you may think that you have a right. But you also have a responsibility to God to see that the person who wronged you as a fellow child of God who is wrapped up in their own problems. Your right to be angry is usually a cover for not wanting to assume your responsibility as a Christian. There's a truism in the mental health field that damaged people damage people. When we assert our right to be angry and strike out at someone, we are letting our own damage damage our relationships. We are giving up our own control and accountability to somebody else. Jesus is showing us how much in control of our emotions, our responses and attitudes we can be if we keep our focus on God. And it takes practice for us. When your sibling or your spouse picks on you, choose another response. When somebody posts something, choose another response. Choose a response that is oriented toward love or joy, peace or patience. Start with something small. When someone you don't know does something that you don't like, say, 
has protests in the streets of Minneapolis or in the U.S. Capitol. Rather than get angry and call them names or tell lies about their motives, oh, you know, that whole do not bear false witness thing, you know, you have other choices. You can ignore it. You can say, I wonder why they felt they had to do that. Or, how have they been hurt in their life that would lead them to make this kind of choice? You could even take the first step in finding out those things. It's easy. It's lazy, even, just to write them off as bad people, ungrateful people, disrespectful disrespectful people. But then, you've given them the power to manipulate you and your responses and attitudes. Every time they do something, they can tick you off. So you can make another choice. It's not easy at first, but it can be done. You always have the power to change your response. In fact, truly, (laughs) it's the only thing that you have the power to do. We all want our lives to mean something, to have meant something by the time they come to an end. After so many funerals in the last few weeks, that's really clear to me. So where do we find that meaning? We come to church often to help with that. We want to be better Christians. So we should look for and find meaning first in Jesus' life and the ways in which he chose to interact with people. Second, we should find meaning in dying to ourselves and our egos and being reborn to serve others with our allegiance only to God and God's kingdom. And third, we can find meaning in being able to choose our attitudes and how we respond. When we respond in love, in patience, in gentleness, in gratitude, kindness, and self-control, we will find meaning living in the kingdom of God right here, right now on this earth. Viktor Frankl lived to be 92 years old. And in the summation of all of his work, some 39 books, he came to realize that the salvation of humankind is through love and in love. And this is what Jesus showed us some 2,000 years ago. If we want our lives to have meaning, we need to place it in the context of Jesus, loving God and loving our neighbor. Amen.
Let us say together what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Holy God, you wash us through and through and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive through, through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence. And you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds. Protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. My prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are dying and all who grieve. Prayer rise up like Sense before you the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death, empower our congregations in discipleship, equip children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation and learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, receive the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving and the offering of our lives, that following on the way of the cross, we may know the joy of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also also with with you. you. The Lord be with you. And also also with with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Let us pray. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus the Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and then he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. So with this bread and this cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Let's join now in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Return to God with all your heart. Receive bread for the journey and drink for the desert. Behold who you are and become what you will receive. Now, if you are uh, as you are gathered around uh, the computer or television, whatever you're watching on, uh, please take your bread and wine and uh, take the bread, give it to someone nearby or take it yourself and say, this is the body of Christ given for you. And then in the same manner, take your wine or juice and say, this cup is the blood of Christ is shed for you. Adam, the body of Christ is given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. Paul, the body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. 
May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, and within you to give you peace. Amen. Amen. And now, marked with the cross of Christ, let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God.